What is up, folks? How's it going? This is Watch. Hope you guys are all doing well. And what you're looking at is the GTX 980. I bought this car back in 2014, almost six years ago. And one of the things that I've always been curious about is technical progress over the years. Now, we always feel that things are stagnant. Things are moving progressively slower and slower each year. But uh, to put things in perspective, what we're going to do is compare this older GPU to a modern day RTX 2080 Super from Zotec. We're going to take a look at one game in particular, Control, that has enhanced ray tracing capabilities enabled. We're going to take a look at the general gaming performance that you're going to get by using an older graphics card and playing a modern day gaming title that has highly demanding visual elements in it, as well as take a look at the overall ray tracing capability of control, what you're getting in terms of visual enhancements, and see what the difference is between ray tracing on and off. Now, just to give you guys a little bit of a difference between these two graphics cards, we'll have the specifications up right on screen. And as you can see, the GTX 980 for the time was definitely pretty powerful. We had a base of frequency clock of about 1266 megahertz, 7,010 megahertz memory clock. We have over 2,048 CUDA cores, as well as four gigs of GDDR5 memory with a 256 bit memory width. Now we're specifically using the RTX 2080 Super Amp Extreme Edition from Zotec. Now being several generations newer in pretty much all categories you can think of, the 2080 Super is gonna be far superior. We have uh, 3072 CUDA cores, we have double the uh, memory capacity of eight gigabytes of GDDR6 memory, as well as double the memory clock speed as well, a much faster boost frequency at uh, 1875 megahertz. In terms of the uh, gaming rig, we're gonna keep things fairly simple i'm using the previous generation intel core i7 8700k processor based off of a z370 motherboard uh, take a look at the description for more details about the benchmarking rig and just to keep the resolutions a little bit more manageable for uh, the uh, 980 we're just gonna play control at 1080p but we're gonna keep the detail settings high and at that resolution with those detail settings we're getting around 33 frames per second after about 20 minutes of uh, playing control on our GTX 980 and that's certainly not very good and uh, keep in mind this is a very demanding uh, gaming title it's modern it's designed for the latest hardware and uh, it's certainly hard for the GTX 980 to kind of keep up uh, with the level of textures details required to play this game at the specific uh, texture detail levels now if you do bump down the uh, detail levels to medium to low you'll get more 40 to 50 frames per second uh, which is certainly a little bit more manageable but definitely not as enjoyable now as soon as we pop in the 2080 super from zotec with ray chasing turned on we're getting around uh, 50 frames per second which is still very very manageable especially at this resolution of 1080p and we keep in mind we still have high details on the textures themselves now the key thing that we want to demonstrate in this video is to give you guys some real world examples of what it actually looks like when you have ray tracing enabled and when you have it disabled now in both case scenarios you're getting really good frame rates with a high performance card like the 2080 super but does it really translate into a tangible enhancements in the visual experience especially when you're playing a game like control which is developed developed around the ray tracing capabilities of the RTX series of GPUs. Now, if you go to the video settings of the game and under the ray tracing settings, there's actually five different parameters that you can adjust to enhance in-game visual elements such as reflections, transparencies, indirect light diffusions, contact shadows, as well as ray tracing around destructive elements and debris. Now, in terms of demonstrating the real differences between RT on and RT off, we're going to run through a couple of different examples in the game itself. And the first one that you're looking at is actually at the entrance level with all the ray tracing elements set to high details you can see that we can actually identify objects in the reflections themselves especially on the ground on this marble floor we can identify the different light sources as well as other ambient uh, light sources if there's multiple uh, sources of light coming throughout the environment we can also see a greater level of uh, texture details on the reflective surfaces themselves as well as the logo on the floor on this particular example 
example. Furthermore, the dynamics of the reflections will also change depending upon the surface it's being reflected on. So if you take a look at this steel vault door later on in the level, you could see, again, a better detail information about what's being reflected. In this case, you can see the red in the carpet in the background, as well as uh, some of the other elements. It just looks more photorealistic. And one of the key things about making things look real is making the lighting more realistic. And that's where ray tracing uh, really has an edge up compared to just having sharper overall visual elements and better overall textures it just again enhances the visual experience to something a little bit more next level and again introduces uh, more photorealism into the gaming experience there are a number of other examples if you go down the hallway you can see uh, that on the wood panel surface themselves on uh, the side walls you can actually make out the circular lights with the rt on when you turn it off all that information goes away and you simply have uh, more diffuse lighting and you can't actually tell what's actually creating that light in the first place. So uh, you're actually losing some information in that regard when you have ray tracing turned off. Uh, the other big thing is uh, reflections, especially in transparent objects like glass. Take a look at this example of uh, this photo frame with a glass a surface of the picture itself. You can actually see a very very clear reflection of the vending machines in the background when you have ray tracing turned on and with it off you don't even see it so in some situations you will be able to replicate again what you see in real life so if you see an enemy uh, in the reflection you can actually make out the enemy and uh, identify where they're coming from and who they are and things like that versus when you have ray tracing turned off and in scenarios like this you won't get any of that detail in the reflection beyond that when we come back to just enhancing the visual experience especially on a level like the astro plane challenge that we have in control uh, you can see that we can uh, completely change the look of the environment especially when you have these kind of shiny marble finishes on the floor and these kind of interesting geometrical patterns in uh, the environment itself in the sky we can see all those reflections and it really enhances the overall look of the game when you have a card like the 2080 super that can render out all the ray tracing elements at a fairly high frame rate that's fairly playable uh, with all the ray tracing elements at high detail. So definitely a huge difference. And if we take a look at a side-by-side -side comparison between playing the same level on the 980 compared to the 2080 Super, it's pretty much a nine day difference by not only a playability standpoint, but just from a visual enhancement standpoint, it's a lot more enjoyable as you would imagine with the more powerful ray tracing enabled card. Now, besides those examples that we've demonstrated, there are a number of other experiences that I found in Control where the ray tracing definitely made a huge impact in both the playability standpoint and coming back to the whole visual aspect of making the game look more photorealistic. In terms of comparing against the older card, obviously we know that it's going to be uh, many folds faster. Uh, technology progresses at a super fast rate and all being almost six years old, there's no way that that you're going to have a comparable experience with the 980 compared to a modern day GPU. But that just means that progress is happening. And even though sometimes we feel that the PC gaming world and technology in general is pretty stagnant, if you take a look at uh, things from a long term perspective, you're going to see some major progress. And hopefully, we've demonstrated that a little bit in this video. I want to give a huge thank you to Zotech for making this video possible. Without them, we wouldn't have uh, the AMP edition of the uh, 2080 to play around with and we're going to be using this card uh, to make our new gaming pc very very soon so again a big thank you for them to support us and an even bigger thank you for you guys for watching and making this content possible now please let me know if you guys have any specific questions check out the description down below for more details about everything we've talked about give us a thumbs up if you like this video and make sure you have notifications turned on so that way you get our videos once they become available Big thank you again for watching and we'll see you later. Take care.